Welcome friends to my author's channel. I present to your attention a weekly report of events over the past week and so we begin. Lawyers and bankers are working on documents for the new international system which is planned to be phased in from autumn this year to 2025. This work is necessary because if the details are not worked out properly, big problems will arise because everything will lead to large-scale changes in the world. This fine-tuning takes time. However, it should be clear that this is not a transfer of power from one secret group to another. The new system will be handed over to humans so that the meek will inherit the earth. Meanwhile, the rules-based world order will continue to collapse. This means that we will face a lot of upheaval as the latest conspirators desperately fight to maintain control of the planet and avoid war crimes tribunals. The latest sign of this was the removal of Iranian President Ebrahim Raisi and his associates. Several Israeli reports and other well-known reports now report that this was planned. Iran's Supreme Leader Ali Khamenei says, If we find evidence of Israel's involvement in the Iranian president's helicopter crash, we will react beyond the imagination of Israel and its allies. After Racy's death, the next supreme leader is likely to be Ali Khamenei's son, Moitab Khamenei. This means a return to dynastic rule in Persia. However, the question of who will rule the dynasty has not yet been resolved. One thing is clear, this is another desperate attempt to unleash World War III in order to remove most of humanity. Recall that the Rothschilds used Khamenei to play a role in their planned disaster Gog Shanghai cooperation organization against Armageddon Magog G7. As part of this planned show, Brigadier General Esmail Khani, commander of the Iranian Islamic Revolutionary Guard Corps Urquiz forces, sent a warning to Britain. Germany and France after the trio deployed their fighter jets to protect the Israeli regime from retaliatory actions organized by Iran last month. In other words, since Israel was dissuaded from starting an all-out confrontation with Iran, they will instead try to use European countries. Sources in the Planetary Liberation Alliance at the Pentagon say that what will happen instead is that Israel will cease to be a state and Israeli puppets will be removed. For Netanyahu and his close confidants, the game is over, the source says, adding, Persia may return to the Pahlavi dynasty. Crown Prince Reza Pahlavi is in the process of correction. He cooperates with the WH alliance. The Persian people are definitely turning away from the current rulers, the source says. A departure from the current rulers is also necessary in most Western countries. This means that the white-capped military still has a lot of cleaning to do before the new financial system and new international architecture begin. This cannot happen under the current Western leadership. An example of this is the fake Canadian opposition leader Pierre Poilever. And what about his statement that the Jewish people lived there for 3,000 years? That's a lie. This is the land of Judea. Do not forget that Poilever was bribed with money stolen from Canadians as a result of fraudulent checks by the PRC. It is safe to say that he is also being blackmailed. The same, of course, applies to Justin Costrudo. Activists hold daily mass demonstrations demanding the overthrow of potential dictator Benjamin Netanyahu. Provocation against Iran will not prevent its removal from this land. His removal will be part of the great work of elimination that needs to be done in the West before he is fully cured of his insane infection. An example of this is the unveiling of a portrait of King Charles, who lit up the internet with his satanic images. Charles was appointed to the position six months, six weeks, and six days after the departure of Queen Elizabeth. The satirical video showing him at the portrait's unveiling is mostly true. Even if we are constantly told that the real Charles is dead as long as avatars or computer graphics are featured in the world's media, the battle is not over yet. The BBC also reports that King Charles handed his son Prince William a prestigious post in the army to symbolically pass the baton. This is an attempt by Germany to seize control of the British armed forces and it will fail, warns me six. Kate Middleton, who Princess Diana's friends claim was sacrificed, will not be at Charles's parade at Wimbledon. 
She hasn't been seen in public since Christmas. Me6 sources report that they are fighting hard to remove black occultists associated with Germany from power in England and Ireland, and that this will happen sooner rather than later. The situation in Australia is also in crisis as the government has just passed a non-human law on digital identity cards. Labor Secretary Stephen Jones says it's completely voluntary, but then he accidentally reveals that companies can prescribe it. In an operation likely related to this, Google Cloud accidentally deleted the $125 billion private cloud account of the Australian Pension Fund. Although the restoration of the service began on Thursday, it may take some time before the investment balances begin to reflect the correct numbers. Transfer? There is no more money. It seems that the Rockefellers are robbing Australian pensions in addition to Japanese ones in order to stay in business. Me6 tells us that former Treasurer Peter Costlo is Australia's top nutcase and a high-ranking target of the White Hats. Koslo was awarded a comfortable job at the World Bank for helping the Australian Special Forces attempt to save Madeleine McCann from an occult ritual. According to Me6, McCann was the biological daughter of George Soros, raised as a special victim bride. European Commission President Jose Manuel Barroso and Belgian members of the royal family were involved in the sacrifice ritual along with many other Western elites, the report said. People also wake up and realize that many of their so-called leaders are fake. In a clumsy attempt to hide this, President Biden is using executive privilege to prevent the release of audio recordings of his own interrogations with special counsel Robert Hare, because the interviews proved that the one who plays the role is too old to go to prison. Despite this, the US government is still behaving as if there will be an election between Biden and Donald Trump in November. It has just been announced that CNN will host the presidential debate between Biden and Trump in Atlanta, Georgia, in 2024. The debate will be broadcast live on CNN, CNN Max, and without cable TV. If you look at the details, you will see that there will be no live audience at these debates. In other words, most likely, it will be a computer show with actors and artificial intelligence. Probably, all this is done in order to distract people while the Kazarian group is preparing for an emergency, a black swan, according to CIA sources. It seems that the Khazars are planning not only a black swan, but also a pink swan. The black swan is likely to become a kind of pandemic used as an excuse to impose totalitarian rule on Americans. Greg Rees and others report that the federal government is conducting a large-scale operation, flooding the country with uncontrolled foreigners, resettling them across the United States and providing them with housing and financial assistance. They will also be provided with weapons to ensure compliance with the United Nations plan to combat disease X. Donald Trump warns that Democrats want to use bird flu to disrupt the 2020 for elections. Moreover, these criminals and their political puppets are still trying to start a nuclear war. For example, Senator Lindsey Graham calls on Israel to use nuclear weapons. They also released a computer version of Victoria Newland calling for missile strikes against Russia. These attacks and retaliatory actions have already begun. There are huge fires in chemical plants, red rivers, and other strange things that are happening in Germany that are not reported. We suspect that this is a Russian response for the German attack on Russia. Any use of Western weapons against peaceful Russian cities may provoke the use of more powerful weapons to protect Russian citizens, State Duma Speaker Vyacheslav Volodin warns. Western politicians must realize their responsibility and do everything possible to prevent the situation from escalating into a global catastrophe, he stressed. As part of this struggle, there may also be mutual assassinations of politicians. Polish Prime Minister Donald Tusk reports that after the assassination attempt on Slovak Prime Minister Robert Fico, he received death threats on the internet. The puppet leaders of the Khazar group must understand that if they eliminate the politicians who oppose them, retribution will be 100-fold. Gone are the days when you could bring world leaders to their knees with death threats. The situation will escalate. The escalation will come after the collapse of the Ukrainian regime. 
The term of office of President Vladimir Zelensky expired on May 20, which means that he is no longer the official head of state. This means that, in accordance with international law, Russia can now enforce the arrest warrant issued against it. CIA sources say Zelensky is afraid to come out of his hiding place because he knows that there is a valid contract. President of Ukraine Zelensky cancels all upcoming foreign trips as Russia advances in the Kharkiv region. The collapse of the Ukrainian regime is now visible to everyone. There was no first line of defense. We've seen it. The Russians just went inside. They just went inside without minefields, says Denis Yaroslavsky, commander of the Ukrainian Special Intelligence Unit. Why was there no protection? Martina Boguslavets, head of the Inter-Georgian Anti-Corruption Center, reports that millions of dollars allocated for the construction of fortifications in Ukraine were instead transferred to fictitious companies created by avatars. In other words, Zelensky and his henchmen are engaged in last-minute robberies. Now that the operation in Ukraine is over, it is the turn of revenge for the destruction of Yugoslavia. Last week, Chinese President Xi Jinping visited Serbia and said China supports Serbia's efforts to preserve sovereignty and territorial integrity in the Kosovo issue. Then, TASS reports Serbian President Aleksandr Vucic thanked the Russian authorities for supporting the territorial integrity of his country and respecting its sovereignty. Hinting that Serbia is on the verge of war, Vucic said, The path chosen by our country is not easy, but we expect full support from all true friends of Serbia. For reference, Yugoslavia was destroyed by Bill Clinton and Rockefeller in order to create a criminal state of Kosovo and plunder its mineral resources. As a sign that the reborn Austria-Hungary is participating in this step, Xi Jinping made the following statement during his visit to Hungary. China and Hungary will cooperate in moving forward within the sea framework Albania, Bulgaria, Croatia, Czech Republic, Hungary, Poland, Romania, Slovak Republic, Slovenia and the three Baltic states, Estonia, Latvia and Lithuania working together to promote cooperation on a broader scale. Resolutely defend international justice and justice and promote the building of a community with a common future for humanity. This is part of a much larger attempt by the Chinese to end U.S. Dominance In this context, China sold record government and agency bonds worth $53, $3 billion in the first quarter of 2024, buying gold instead. Since 2020, gold has performed 75% better than U.S. Government bonds China is also in the process of cleaning up its finances. Dozens of government regulators, bankers, and financial executives involved in a corruption network have been arrested in China this year. Our sources in Asian intelligence say that this is part of the operation to clean up the agents of Rockefeller and Rothschild. There is also a fierce battle going on in Taiwan, which is almost unreported. Taiwanese lawmakers are pushing, hitting, and hitting each other. The reason for this is that President-elect Lei Jingda will take office without a legislative majority. Parliament is demanding oversight powers over the government, including a controversial proposal to criminalize officials making false statements in Parliament. Members of Asia's royal family say this battle in Taiwan is linked to a dispute over whether a unreplacement should be stationed in Japan rather than Laos, as suggested by the Chinese. The Chinese are also trying to do something about their rapidly growing housing market and have announced a number of measures aimed at stimulating the housing market. They spend more than $40 billion to create affordable housing and promise to hand over unfinished houses. It's definitely too little and too late, and there's still a lot to do. In another belated step, Rep. Thomas Massey, Kentucky, announces the introduction of legislation to repeal the Federal Reserve Management Act H.R. 8421. The Massey Act abolishes the Board of Governors of the Federal Reserve System and the Federal Reserve Banks. It also repeals the Federal Reserve Act, the 1913 law that established the Federal Reserve System. Americans are suffering from sharp inflation, and the Federal Reserve is to blame for this, says Representative Massey. 
During the troubles in 2019, the Federal Reserve created trillions of dollars out of nowhere and lent them to the Treasury to create an unprecedented deficit. By monetizing debt, the Federal Reserve devalued the dollar and allowed for a policy of free circulation that led to the high inflation we face today. In this regard, Fed Chairman Jerome Powell tested positive again on January 18, 2023. His first positive test result was May 18, 2024. Who is being tested for these days? Enjoy your orange jumpsuit and free meals in the gated community, Jerome, Polish intelligence reports say. Of course, the US cannot act alone because it is bankrupt compared to the rest of the world. They will have no choice but to accept the multipolar world built by the BRICS. It is very likely that the blockchain BRIC pay payment system, which is not under us control, will be agreed upon for settlements in digital currencies, as well as for the creation of new payment channels between Russian and Chinese legal entities. The economy, both Russian and Chinese, is in dire need of solutions, and here and now Pavel Kuznetsov, vice president of the National Coordination Center for International Economic Cooperation, told Izvestia. In addition, the Russians have agreed to join a $100 trillion gold-based future planning initiative negotiated by Asian and Western White Hats, according to sources in Russia's FSB. The Russians also agreed to a plan to replace the Insecurity Council with a World Council with seven regions, sources say. This is evidenced by various reports about the big summit meeting between Putin and Xi Jinping last week. Russia and China are working towards a fairer democratic path. It establishes a world order reflecting the real weight of states and their associations, Russian Foreign Minister Sergei Lavrov said. President Putin called Russian-Chinese cooperation in world affairs one of the most important stabilizing factors in the international arena after meeting with President Xi Jinping and stressed that. The two countries together defend the principles of a just and democratic world order reflecting the growth of global multipolarity. Noting the common commitment of Beijing and Moscow to justice and equality in relations, the Chinese leader called the Cold War mentality. One-sidedness, hegemonism, confrontation of blocs and power politics, which is now used by some countries as a threat to peace and international security. Russian President Vladimir Putin's recent visit to China will determine the future of the world, Russian Foreign Ministry spokeswoman Maria Zakharova said. These are important steps that will determine the future not only of our region but also of the entire planet, the diplomat said. In the West, we largely agree with this opinion. The emergence of bloc education requires fundamental changes in the management of international relations. The great powers must move from a zero-sum competitive mentality to a more flexible framework that takes into account the interests of a wider range of players, not just traditional allies, says Professor Andrew Latham, who adheres to such views. Another sign of the decline of the rules-based world order is a full-page advertisement by the Nigerian government in the New York Times in which it announces the sale of its oil fields at auction for the benefit of the people of Nigeria. It looks like Nigeria kicked out the Rockefellers and nationalized its oil. See you next time, friends.